Now I'm going to go over how to beam your cave. And this is a, a very useful feature. If you have two survey teams out there um, surveying with Ariga, and they're working on the same file, so they start with the original file, they go out and they both add different sections of the cave through their survey, you can come back and you can beam to one another those sessions. And, and Ariga will add those sessions. It won't overwrite anything. So if they have two stations and someone made an adjustment to the station, when you when they beam it over to you, they'll make a it'll make a copy of it. So you'll have to go through and figure out uh, figure out what changes you need to make, which which shot is the more accurate one. But for the for the most part, since you won't be changing any of the original shots, it will only bring over the the uh, new shots that have been added. So to beam, first of all you have to make sure that your palm is set up to receive um, receive a beamed file and to do that you go to the applications click on the applications and it brings you to your applications list and then you're gonna go into your preferences and in your preferences you'll click on this drop down menu in the upper right hand corner and go to general and then you want to make sure that beam receive is on and not off so if that is on and everything's good, go back to your applications, enter Ariga, and from Ariga, you can, if you're in a shot right now, actually let's go into, we'll go home. If you're home and you select a cave, and actually go back home, and you select your test cave, and uh, you want to beam that entire cave over, then, uh, then you can select the cave, go to menu, and then down to beam and it'll start beaming but of course it's not going to find anything right now so we'll cancel that and uh, and then you just wait until it recognizes and it'll tell you that uh, that it's transferring the information and when it's done so you can beam your cave that way if you're going through and you want to beam just a single shot then you can go into the shot menu or into the shot window and again go to menu and then down to beam and then this window will come up that allows you to beam the entire cave, the session, the session and shots, survey shots between certain dates or the current survey shots. So you have a lot more uh, a lot more flexibility here in when you're actually in the shot window. So that is how you beam the cave and finally I'm going to go over just a few of the drop down menu items and how you get into some of the menus to edit existing settings that you've got throughout your uh, your cave. So to do that, um, what we're going to do, let's click on the menu here and we'll just kind of look through the different drop down menu items. So you've got your statistics, again we already went through that. Details is, if we click there, that is where we have the cave name and the settings for our cave file. So I'm going to click cancel and we'll go again under the the cave menu you've got your sessions so if you click there you can add and subtract other sessions you can edit your sessions click done you also have your closure errors so if you uh, if you have multiple loops <clears throat> you can click on closure errors and since there are no survey shots with loop closure okay it'll give you a list of your different loops and where they've closed at and how accurate they were so you can go back and find out which stations you need to uh, fix and you can see how good your loop closures are. Um, you also have, oh there's beam and uh, close is the same as going home. Let's go to edit. Um, just typical editing settings, cut, paste, copy, all that kind of stuff. And your options is where your preferences are at. You can set your fonts and uh, preferences. That's where we did the assistant, general map, um, map settings, the paper grid, and uh, and link. If you want to link to a GPS unit and do a surface survey, you could do that, and that's where you do this. But you can learn more about that on the Eureka website in the user manual. And it looks like that is about it. Other things are power off, uh, the, whether you want to show the backlight, all that kind of stuff, which are just little nitpicky things. So that in a nutshell is Ariga and how you use the basic features and there are a lot of other really cool features that you can go into as you begin to grasp these um, more basic features of the program and uh, oh, one more thing actually it looks like down here we've got the uh, the little run button if you have a really mazy cave or an extensive cave with a lot of stations and you want to find a certain station this runner is kinda of like the search guy you click on him and you can search for a station it'll take you there
and uh, so we want to find a1, a2, hit OK, and it takes us to that. So we'll cancel. So that is uh, that's about all I can think of right now. Um, if you have any any other questions, any things that you're wondering about, I would encourage you to go to the Arigo website again and pull up that user manual and become familiar with such an amazing program.